nuclear waste material along with all the associated machinery, the US Navy would save a great deal of money, more than the scrap worth of the steel, if USS Enterprise were to be sunk in the Persian Gulf, where the radioactive mess is someone else's problem to deal with. So why send an ancient warship at the end of a useful life into harm's way? The same reason Franklin Roosevelt moved a bunch of obsolete warships from San Diego to Pearl Harbor, while the newer carriers and warships were well away from Hawaii on December the 7th, 1941. Israel has three dolphin submarines, given to her by Germany. They have been seen transiting the Suez Canal in the past and could well be operating in the Gulf of Oman, even the Persian Gulf by now, lying in wait for a used up and obsolete warship, more useful as a sacrificial lamb than an actual weapon, a ship with American sailors to be attacked as Israel attacked the USS Liberty, then to be blamed on the designated target, Iran, by a compliant media. If you agree with this analysis, please post this video everywhere you see this carrier story. If we can make them doubt a false flag will be believed, maybe they'll call it off. Yeah, I'm signing these evil 1770 six flags. Doesn't get any more out of control than that, ladies and gentlemen. It's pretty un-American what we're doing here at InfoWars.com. I mean, not only are we promoting liberty, but we're selling 1776 flags. Now that is Al-Qaeda. Welcome back. It is Monday, January 30th, 2012, and I'm doing the interview section of InfoWars Nightly News tonight. I want to thank Aaron Dykes for the great job he did preceding me here this evening. And uh, continuing with financial news, then we're going to our financial news expert, uh, Nomi Prinz. Here's the New York Post. The Associated Press is also reporting this. MF Global Client Money Feared Gone. We've been hearing for two months that, well, they're going to find it. Of course, we know where it went, J.P. Morgan and others uh, over in London. Uh, but now, after stringing folks along, they're saying, well, now it's just feared gone. And of course, Corzine a month ago got caught lying in Congress uh, saying that he didn't know uh, where the money went and didn't give the order. And then the head of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange came out and said, no, we were in conversations that day. He gave the order. Uh, also, pundits fear perfect storm despite official optimism. Official optimism may have spun this whole thing in Europe and here in the U.S. that we have to have austerity because we're in debt, but then the elephant in the room is the majority of this money is our governments propping up the derivatives. That's why we're in debt. I mean, this is incredible. And we have a photo that I'm going to show to our guests. We'll put it up there now. This came out uh, on different news wires a few days ago and got pulled, but not before we saved it. And that's a shot from one of the Davos, uh, Switzerland uh, conference uh, meetings they were having. Notice it says global governance failure uh, in the background. And, and they were discussing how their system isn't working. The answer is giving the kleptocrats even more power. The Associated Press reports euro, uh, rich, poor gap, uh, provide key issues at Davos while the very perpetrators talk about giving themselves a hundred trillion more of our money to fix things and then they'll help the poor. Just amazing. Financial Times of London's reporting Greek fury at plan for EU budget control. So the rumors are all true now. Germany and others have said we'll send tax enforcers in to impose the VAT, the rest of it, to pay Greece's debt which was a bunch of Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan people that signed them onto it. Just, again, off the charts, financial uh, espionage against these countries. And here's Sky Television. Sarkozy announces sales tax rise. So just taxes everywhere globally, cutting the services, raising the taxes to pay the lion's share of it to the very banksters uh, that have implemented this crisis. And talk about an insider whistleblower. I guess for close to a decade, she's been out there exposing them, writing best-selling uh, books. Um, she is Nomi Prinz. 
Uh, before becoming a journalist, Nomi worked on Wall Street as a managing director at Goldman Sachs and ran the international analytics group of Bear Stearns in London. She is also a senior fellow at Demos, based uh, in Los Angeles. And uh, we'll have her uh, website up on screen for viewers out there. You certainly uh, want to visit it. She, and she has a new novel uh, out that ties into what's happening in reality as well. So she'll tell us about that before she leaves us. Hey, thank you for coming on with us today, Nomi. Thanks a lot, Alex. Well, you heard me rattle through all of that. Uh, uh, what's the latest in the world? What do you think is most important? Well, it's... It's all connected. I, I think at this point, the connectivity between all the things you talked about, the fact that a, a global betting organization like MF Global can make bets relative to Europe, and when they go sour and are going sour, can basically take their customers' secured funds to use them to prop up their bets, and then when it all falls apart, can sit in front of Congress, as John Corzine, former head of MF Global, did, and deny, deny, deny. That's one piece. The second piece is what he bet on, which was Europe. And what he basically bet was that at some point, the powers that be in Europe, that's the uh, European Central Bank, the ECB, um, with, as it turned out, the backing of the Federal Reserve, would come in and bail out not the countries, but the banks within the countries who own the government debt of the countries. And if they've got bailout money, they can prop up the government debt that was created to subsidize them to begin with, and then they can go about their merry way, leaving the countries themselves and those local economies in tatters. Now you go on to Greece and people in the streets. Well, in Greece, we've had, well, they've had four rounds of austerity measures. And, and this doesn't get talked about a lot in, well, almost at all in the mainstream news, but people have had jobs cut. They have had their hours cut. They have had their pay per hour cut. Um, they've had taxes increased on properties they can't afford. They've, they've already had a lot of austerity, none of which has clearly helped the local economy because it is not their fault um, of, the, of the majority of the population that, that what has happened to that country has happened. It is the fault of banks that pilfered the country, a government that tried to stave that off using its own national banks as props, and then those own national banks couldn't contain the damage. Now, they've had 110 billion euros worth of bailouts with in return for these austerity measures, also which haven't worked because they don't plug this banking problem. So what we have is this, this continued global mess where in the United States, we've had the Fed fund trillions of dollars, as we've talked about before, in subsidies to the banking system. The banks in return are holding, as we've also talked about, $1.6 trillion of reserves, or the money they got back at the Fed, for which they're getting interest. The ECB just did the same trick with the push of Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner, who was instrumental in the bank bailout here, whereby they extended loans at the end of last year in December to the banks in Europe, the banks in Europe took these loans, cheap loans at 1% interest, and put the money back to the ECB. So now there's $600 billion worth of loans at the ECB. So in total, and I'll stop here, and we'll go on to the next question, there are $2.5 trillion worth of, of money that the banking system, these are the banks that get these loans, have put back onto the books of the Fed and the European Central Bank, doing absolutely nothing to help the populations either in the United States or in Europe that are at their expense, this has all been happening. Well, looking at an example of this here in the United States, uh, we're seeing what they call financial martial law in Michigan. That's what the governor and, and others, as you know, have called it, where they're coming into cities and saying, you don't get to vote and, and, and we're disbanding your city council, and we're going to hire a corporate company to manage everything and raise rates on people, uh, even though the money has been stolen out the back door, even though global offshoring has destroyed the city. And then I saw another example of one of the uh, biggest towns in Rhode Island, uh, where, the, in their own words, democracy has been suspended. They're getting rid of the city council. A private corporation is now taking control of the town. This is what we see with all these other states. We're now hearing that uh, not just counties and cities, but states going bankrupt. We're now hearing about hundreds of Greek islands 
that are owned by the people, their national parks are also very valuable, being sold, and in some cases transferred as collateral, the London Guardian reported, to hedge fund managers who sold them the garbage to begin with and made money on the upside of the bubble, and then on the downside, they get the islands. I mean, it's just incredible. This is like we're a bank robber. The cops show up and give them an award and say, we're going to make you the head of bank security. It's, they take the lack of knowledge the public has about finance, and they use the corporate bought and paid for media, in some cases, that's gotten government bailout money. And it is just a absolute uh, criminal's paradise. I mean, you wrote about this six, seven, eight years ago in 2004, other people's money, the corporate mugging of America. Uh, I mean, how bad is this going to get? I mean, I'm basically in my long-winded question and, and statement, this austerity that we've seen in the third world, now in Europe, it's now coming here. And we see along with it, the internet censorship, the NDAA, everything that goes with it, it's classical tyranny. Yeah, and, and, and again, it's, it, it's all connected, as, as, as you've just pointed out. The, what's happening in the small towns in the United States, what's happening in the Greek islands, what's happening in, in, in Milan, in, in Italy, they have a lawsuit against uh, Goldman Sachs, Merrill Lynch, which is now Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, and a number of others, for basically selling the town a bunch of bad bonds a number of years ago that, that the town had to borrow money or chose to borrow money from the same banks to buy, and now they're stuck with collateral that's worthless, having to pay back these loans, and, and going bankrupt themselves. And this, this has repeated in city after city across the United States and across Europe. And that's the reason that there isn't enough money in local budgets or in state budgets or in national budgets to, to run an economy, because all of the money has been drained out. That was in step one. In step two, in order to repay the money that has, that repay the loans that were made against money that has now been drained out, these same banks and hedge funds and private equity funds and venture capital firms are looking for collateral. The collateral is what's left. What's left, yes, they're Greek islands, they're, they're resort hotels, they're um, the electric company infrastructure in small towns in Spain. They are um, the, uh, the wind power organizations and, and, and organization of in, in, in Norway. They, they are, they're all of the pieces of infrastructure that make up an economy that are being used as collateral in the second phase of this whole pillage. And one of the, for example, even the other night when, when all the protesters were, were again arrested outside of Oakland, I was looking up after that because it, it just made me so mad that we're arresting the wrong people all the time, that I looked up what the city of Oakland has done in the past and, and they lost a lot of money investing in uh, securities that, that Goldman and others had basically sold to them through a German company. Um, so, you know, this is, this is in Oakland, but, but they are losing money because of that. Protesters are protesting against this, and they're the ones getting arrested. Um, so it's, it's really a, an increase in a problem because the, the worse it gets, the more the financial institutions want to get back the bets they've already made, and the more they will go after real assets, real, real infrastructure, real, real towns. And this is the next phase of this problem. Well, I think about Austin, Texas, and they say it's about environmentalism. That's just the cover. But I remember five years ago reading about how our power prices would go way up because big multinationals were coming in using government inside uh, uh, regulators to shut down or curtail the city-owned, the county-owned, the co-op-owned power systems, including some that were hydroelectric, shutting them down and, 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 and then coming in and charging two, three, four times what they were previously 